All right, first team on NBA. You want to go first? Yeah, I have a... I tried to figure out how to put Luca at forward because <laughs> cause it solved a lot of problems. Wait, and I did it. Didn't we just last week talk about how like, hey, this is the way we've been doing it. It says do it by position. You can't make it up. And the first thing you say... Well, here's I the try, thing. I try to get Luca at forward. I voted for him at forward in 2021 and 2020. So two years in a row, I had him at forward. And I was like, why wouldn't I do that again? And I looked. I looked at all the lineups they played. I thought he played with Brunson and did Whitty more. He really didn't. No. The, yeah. When you sent me that text today, I didn't yeah, want to I, I I jump all on you. Yeah. They split him up a decent amount. Yeah. He's, Luca was just a guard. It's, it's, a stretch to put him at forward. And it's a it's, huge stretch. I didn't feel good about it, so I didn't do it. Um, okay. So, Yoka, Giannis, Tatum, Luca, Booker, which I think most people, that I think that's going to be the five, unless you unless you cheat and put Embiid and Jokic together. I went back, I looked at the last six times I voted for All-NBA dating back to 2016. In 21, I had Jokic 1 and Embiid 2. In 20, I had Davis 1 and Jokic 2. In 19, I had Embiid 1 and Jokic 2. In 18, I had Davis 1 and Embiid 2. I just, I think you should pick one center. I've done it the whole time. I've had a vote, and I don't see why we would change that this year. And I think, as we discussed in part one, had Jokic, Jokic a hair over Embiid. I feel bad. Embiid had an awesome season, but this is the shit that happens when you do all NBA. So that's my five. Who do you have? I have the exact same thing. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't screw around with it. I put it by position and you know, it, it sucks for Embiid. There you go. Um, okay. Second team. We both have Embiid. Yes. We both have Durant. Yes. I really tried to go down the road with figuring out him for 55 games for first team on NBA, but the bottom line is Tatum had a great resume. There's no reason to bump Tatum for first team. He was really good. If Durant had played 10 more games, he gets the Tatum spot, but you know, he played 55. Bad luck. He was out for 21 games. The records with, uh, the records for him, um, when he played versus when he didn't play, it was probably the most significant of anybody we're talking about, right? He was, 27 missed games. They're 35 and 19 when he played, 8 and 19 when he didn't play. It's too bad. And he's had a lot of bad luck with this stuff over the years where I think the untimely injuries or 20 game injuries here and there. Anyway, I have Embiid, Durant, DeRozan, Curry, Ja is where I landed, which I think is what most, most people are going to pick. You had that? We, yeah, we did not talk about this ahead of time. I have the exact same five. Look, if you're going through it, did I want to put Chris Paul in the Ja Moran spot? I did. I just couldn't get there. I thought the Suns were that good this season. And the thing with Chris, he was 15-4 and 11 assists a game. He was uh, 49-32-84. The three-pointers were lower than I thought this year, the percentage for him. Um, his usage rate was 19.7, which I thought was amazing. 17 missed games. There were 53-12, and 11-5 without him. And his stats would be better if he cared about stats, which he doesn't. But it just it just wasn't quite good enough. And Ja, even though he missed uh, 24 games, he, he meant so much in those games. I think he gave that team a championship aura by how good he was. And um, I just thought he deserved second And team. he was insane when he played. And I he mean, was I know insane they, when I know he played. They, I know they won a bunch of games without him, but then I didn't feel good about putting the other guards that are in the mix ahead of him because I thought when Ja was in, it was that dynamic and they won a bunch of games with him. We know they won a bunch of games without him, which is crazy. But, you know, and if you're going to do KD second team, you have to do Ja for doing KD. Yeah, do that's a combo. So. Third team. Let's see if we have any changes. I think we will on this one. Guards, Chris Paul and Trey Young. Yep. You know, last time we did it, ran through it. I, I left going, okay, I'm not leaving Trey off. I'm not 100% comfortable with the financial implications for it. So I, I think if it's close, I would probably go in that direction. 
Now, there's no way I'd put Trey any higher than third team here because they were extremely disappointing despite all of his numbers. And then when there was a moment where I was like, would I put Trey over Chris Paul if I put another guard? Because I don't love that I don't have Donovan Mitchell in the mix because the numbers are absurd again for Donovan Mitchell and they're still a good team. If not, They're not great, but Utah's been good. Um, I started playing with these, these scenarios where I'm like, imagine if Chris Paul were on the Hawks. Would there be a four seed in the East? You know, like I know, I know that sounds like an anti trade thing, but look, here's the point is Trey and Chris Paul are both my guards on the third team. And once you get through it and you go through all the guards, the only Mitchell, other options Mitchell really, is the only one with a case. Yeah. And Levine, in passing to say his name, because to say it, to say it, that we're aware and we looked at it all and all that kind of stuff. But I'll tell you, this one wasn't the only thing I really struggled with was the other forward spot for the third team. I well, think let's, let's get there. Who'd right. you have for center? I had Towns. Towns. I put him in over Gobert. There's a possible cheat code where you could go Bam. Bam or Gobert at center and put Towns at forward. Because if you watch the T Wolves, even though Vanderbilt's listed as a power forward, Towns is. I don't even really know what position he is. He's kind of like a center forward. And if you wanted to get creative, well, offensively, yeah, he, you know, he'll he'll mix yeah, up his position. I just didn't quite do it. Bit, I I didn't think Bam played enough games, and I didn't want to reward Gobert. Um, Siakam is in one forward spot for me. I think Siakam. I was looking at all the all the votes I had over the years. I had Siakam third team in 2019. I had Siakam third team in 2020, and I have him third team this year. So three of the last four years. I had him as one of the six best forwards of the league. What, five, six months ago, we were like, would you trade, you know, uh, Kaminga, the Kaminga pick and Andrew Wiggins for Siakam? Nah, I wouldn't do that. Siakam, I, I think, I feel like he could have been had in a trade for about okay, but, three months there. But remember, the Siakam stuff got weird, though. It got, like, weird there for a little while. And you're Yeah, like, that's why you, you know, could have had him. Yeah, so he's been unbelievable. Um, for the last however many months. I mean, he he took over the game the other night. And then I did, I, there was a fourth quarter game though in another game where he didn't, like he was going at Embiid in that Philly win. I mean, that was, was. That was incredible. And then he had another game that it wasn't all that great. But the overall numbers, the point is, look, everybody's up and down. It doesn't matter. But uh, his overall numbers now for a long stretch have been really, really good. So I He's, had he's a, almost a 23 and 10, five assists. Yeah, the assist 50, numbers. 49% shooting. He's only missed 14 games. And that team's a five seed. And he's, I think, a worthy forward. So then the other forward spot. I I, I fucking hate it, but I had LeBron. Why and do I you hate it so much? I don't like it. I don't like it. I know I it's mean, disappointing. I know he picks spots. He put up. Huge offensive numbers here again. The forward crop is is light to get to six. He's that's, he's in. That's why I had him. It's like there, it's there's other years like two. I thought it was last year. I got my years mixed up. Two years ago, I kept Beal off because he was a good stats bad team guy. And I, I'm on the record over the years. I don't like the good stats bad team. I don't care. You have yeah, a but sometimes record. here's the point though. Like just like the MVP stuff we were talking about in part one. If you present Embiid's case in a vacuum, you're like, how does that guy lose MVP? And you're like, okay, but you're comparing to everything else. Yep. So in your Beal argument, you may have had a better option that you felt better about. Yes. In this year, to get to six forwards, you have to do something you probably don't like based on your criteria of good stats, bad team guy. But LeBron's still deserving of one of these six spots. And by the way, the Pascal, Jimmy Butler thing was really tough for me. It was really tough. Butler, though, has better efficiency stuff. Yeah, I have him. I have him over Pascal. Enough. I have more Siakam. They were 38 and 19 with Butler, 15 and 9 without him. 23% from three point line this year. He had the weird yep. incident with three weeks left and he missed a ton of games. All right. But the, the on off thing favors Butler over Siakam. The defensive plus minus stuff favors Butler pretty significantly. The, the PER stuff is like almost four points, well, no, three better. There's some there's some stuff with Butler on the analytics side where you're like, wait, I don't know how much of an argument this really is. So I think this stuff with with Spo, whatever. I mean, it looked bad. It looked like Jimmy Butler. It's not new. And if it were new, I don't know how much I would have that like that really gotten your I mean, if you want to just tell me you like Siakam better as a player, I go, okay, fine. You might be right. I might be wrong. The Spo thing didn't factor in. I like Siakam more as a player. 
Okay. I think the second half of the season, I thought he was excellent. He was. And uh, I'm looking up his splits. What were his splits after the All-Star break? He was almost 25 points a game. I mean, he was really good the whole year. He for The assist whatever, numbers, he, too. He November, he was 18 and 7. And then from that point on, he basically took off. And I test wise, I think that team needed him to really step up, especially in close games against good teams. That team did really well against other good teams this year. And he was the guy they went to most of the time. It was him or Van Vliet, but really Siakam if they had the matchups. Whereas Butler, you watch them and and honestly, it seems like Harrow's their more impor- most important guy at the end of a lot of these games. But they kind of ride or die with him. And they're running him around screens and he's the guy who's creating and um, I don't know. I just thought Siakam was better. But I do agree that it was close. I uh, I wanted to put Butler in the LeBron spot. I couldn't get there. The Lakers finished 32 and 50. They were 25 and 31 when he played. He missed 26 games. He was plus 3.4 on off. There's historical stuff where it's like the players, here's the complete list of players who missed at least 23 games on a losing team and made all NBA since the merger. Pete Maravich, 1978. He made first team for some reason. He missed 32 games. Still don't understand it. Bernard King, 1985, made first team. Deserved it. It was 33 a game. was an absolute tornado. And then Kevin Love, second team, 2012. He missed 23 games. And uh, and he made it. The, the list of players that have missed at least 23 games and made first, second, third team, it's less than 15. So Curry did it recently in 2018. Um, ben Warbeck did some good stuff on Yahoo about this. He said, basically, players who played 50-plus games for a legitimately bad team, like 40% record or worse for winning, had a vintage season. It's really only Elgin Baylor, 1960, Will Chamberlain, 63, Kevin Garnett, and Dwayne Wade, both 2007. So they, I think it has to be a famous player having a really good season, and he qualifies. And it's like, should there be a little cachet for being LeBron James? Yeah, maybe there should be. But I don't feel great about it. Okay, but do you still think he's one of the 15 best players? I do. Well, do I think he's one of the 15 impactful guys that we watched this season? Yes. Yeah. I think it's okay. I think it's okay with all NBA to, and I'm not talking like it's some career achievement thing, but I think when you watch a full season of games, and you go, do I really want to put 15 guys ahead of LeBron? I didn't want to do that. 